overall, it's the largest loss on record. So the previous um, record was set in 2012, where we had similar atmospheric conditions leading to um, the, um, uh, the extreme melt in summer. Um, and this was now topped by in 2019. Two thousand seventeen and two thousand eighteen were near balance years uh, for the Greenland ice sheet, which is quite a normal because the recent in the recent decade we had um, we had a mass loss in nearly every year, or we had mass loss actually in every year. The glacier carving and discharge is um, is too large to um, have an ice sheet in balanced conditions, which means that um, even though you, have, you might have a year where you had a, have a lot of snowfall and not as much melt, you will still have the mass loss into the ocean um, through glacier uh, changes. And this is what happened in 2017 and 18. In earlier times, like 30 years ago, um, um, years like or with atmospheric conditions like 2017 and 2018 would have actually produced a mass gain. What happened in 2019 is unprecedented that it, a huge amount of material was lost and when you look at the, the longer scale picture of ice loss in Greenland um, it, Smoothing out those year-to-year -year variabilities, there is a signal where the Greenland ice sheet is increasingly losing more mass, such that a, a few decades ago, um, the amount, the contribution to sea level rise from the Greenland ice sheet was somewhere around 0.1 millimeter, 0.1.2 millimeters, and now it's something like 0.7 millimeters of a global signal, which is about 3.5 millimeters per year. To put that in context, a 0.7 millimeters. Of, of sea level rise is equivalent to pretty much all the 300,000 glaciers on, on, on this world, their contribution to, uh, to sea level rise right now. So the Greenland ice sheet on its own is matching pretty much what's, what is being input to the ocean from all the other glaciers, excluding Antarctica. It's quite a difficult question to answer. We all want to understand, um, say, what will the level of the ocean look like by, say, 2100, because it's, it's, uh, it's some decades away, but it's kind of within the long-term planning horizon. And the answer to that question, unfortunately, is we don't really know. And that's because the dynamics uh, and vulnerability of the polar ice sheets is something that's very difficult to quantify. So at a low level, um, we're pretty much locked into at least another half a metre of sea level rise by that time. Um, and uh, upwards of a meter, but even that might be a low estimate. It's not something that we can reverse. We can't reverse the sea level that's already ha happened. We're locked into that. We, we can't actually reverse some further sea level that will happen because, as I said, we're locked into at least another half a degree of global warming. But what we can do is avoid, say, four degrees of warming by this century, which could be disastrous in many ways, but, but also for sea level by reducing our carbon dioxide to net zero by around about 2050. So this is an urgent thing. This is something that, that we absolutely must um, get a, a grip on.